Hello students. In the previous class, we have discussed the points related to the convex mirror. Convex and concave mirrors are called as a spherical mirrors. And a plane mirror is a two-dimensional plane surface we take. Concave mirror, convex mirror, we call it as a spherical mirrors because they are the part of the spheres. Then what about the plane mirror? It is also the part of the spherical mirror, but thing is, its radius of curvature. If we take it as a sphere, concave or convex, if we take them as a sphere, they have a radius called as the radius of curvature, the radius of the sphere. But uh, this is a plane. Plane means it is uh, nothing but a straight line. Uh, Two-dimensional plane we take, uh, one-dimensional straight line we take. Uh, so if we take the sphere of the very big large radius, radius is very large means small portion of this what you are considering is almost like a two-dimensional strain. Uh, this uh, circle if you have taken means it like a straight line. But if you take a three-dimensional part and if you cut part of the sphere, it becomes a plane. So plane mirror is a part of a sphere only of radius equal to infinity we call. When radius goes on increasing to infinite radius if you have taken, then the surface of this mirror is a spherical mirror is nothing but a plane mirror. So plane mirror radius of curvature is infinity you have to take. And uh, what? how do you take this uh, focal length? Focal length and radius of curvature is relationship is radius of curvature equal to 2 times focal length for the spherical mirror. So for the plane mirror if you have taken means radius of curvature is infinity the focal length is also equal to r by f focal length is nothing but equal to r by 2 infinity by 2 is infinity only so you will get as infinity. Infinity means uh, how do you depend this focal length? If it is a paraxial rays light rays parallel to the principal axis and close to the principal axis are called as the paraxial rays. After reflection they may meet or they appear to meet the point is called as a focus principal focus it is called as a principal focus. So paraxial rays meeting point are appear to meet is a principal focus they cannot pass the mirror. So they appear to meet when they are diverging and converging means they really meet. Appear to meet we call as a virtual cases. But for the plane mirror if you have taken light rays coming parallel reflect parallel they go and they don't meet at all. When, when the parallel rays you have taken means where they are going to meet we have to call we have to call them as at infinite they meet. So focal length we are taking to appear to be infinity here they appear to meet at infinity they are not really meeting. So focal length is taken as a infinity. If it is right side from the mirror plus left side from the mirror means minus. So right side is virtual left side is real ones where they are really meeting it but they appear to meet at infinity only they don't meet actually instead of they don't meet parallel lines we say focal length is infinity and they meet it at infinity. So plane mirror focal length is infinity radius of curvature is also infinity that point you need to remember. For the spherical mirrors the convex mirror we said the focus is behind the mirror means that they really don't meet behind the mirrors therefore that is supposed to be virtual focus and image is always formed between the center of the mirror that is called as a pole to the focus point in between only the image is present and uh, for all spherical mirrors radius of curvature is two times the focal length and uh, object distance left side distance from this pole pole imagine at the origin sign convention left side is uh, negative right side positive and v is obtained image is obtained on right side v is on the right side uh, therefore it is positive focal length is also right side it is supposed to be positive left and right different sign conventions are there actually in this case of sign convention what we take is the direction of light rays and distance in the direction of light rays are positive upper direction of light rays we take them as a negative so if they don't mention what is the direction of light rays direction now then we just simply take a compulsorily light rays traveling from left to right side we have to imagine next is concave mirror in the case of the concave mirror light rays coming parallel to the principal axis i'm talking about only paraxial rays close to the principal axis not marginal rays parallel from the principal axis and uh, after the light rays which are parallel to the principal axis after reflection from the mirror how do the reflection loss of reflection how do you apply for curved, curved surfaces where their light rays are falling dry tangent to the surface and normal to the tangent you have to take and this angle of incidence is going to be angle of reflection after after reflection the light rays will pass through the focus or we can say what is the principal focus for the mirrors is the parallel paraxial rays after reflection they may meet or appear to meet for convex mirror virtual we are really they are meeting for you will get the image formed there wherever the two or more light rays meet image is formed of the object that is called as a real image here you get for the convex mirror compulsory fixed virtual images virtual images only always and always erected images virtual erected and diminished diminished means magnification is less than one magnification is nothing but equal to what is the formula for magnification is height of the image by height of the object it is also equal to minus v by u image distance u is object distance v is the image distance e v by u we have to take a uh, image distance by object distance is nothing but called as a linear magnifications so here linear magnification is always 
less than 1 r less less than 1 means v is less than u and positive will get magnification is positive positive means erected image inverted means downwards means uh, inverted image means minus you have to take magnification is plus for erected in, in minus means inverted next is what is the relation between the u v and f is for the mirrors uh, 1 by f equal to reciprocals 1 by f equal to 1 by u plus uh, 1 by v applicable for uh, both the mirrors and uh, graphs we will discuss later coming back to this concave mirror for this image uh, nature is compulsorily fixed position only but not for the concave mirrors compare mirror different cases are there that you have to go through the tabular column to remember but here i will explain the object is at infinity if you are taking the parallel rays after passing after uh, reflection from the mirror they meet they pass through the focus and uh, ray diagrams principle is that light rays coming parallel to the principal axis after reflection compulsory pass through the focus if the light rays are already passing through the focus light rays are coming such that uh, they are passing through the focus then compulsory they must become parallel to the principal axis in case if the light rays are passing through center of curvature center of curvature is nothing but the point where the radius is a distance from the pole to the center of curvature means center of the sphere that is the distance is nothing but equal to radius from the pole to the c is nothing but radius so if you take this f two times f is nothing but equal to capital f means focus point distance from the pole to focus is called as a focal length focal length symbol we take small f focus point we take the symbol capital f and the center of curvature is c if the letter is passing through center of curvature that means it is passing along the radius if the letter is passing through the, along the radius is always normal to the surface the plane mirror if you have taken if the light is normal light is coming along the normal reflect again backwards in the same direction it is called retracing the path that means i is zero not this angle with respect to the plane please i and r are measured with respect to normal this is a normal so light rays are incident along the normal reflected backwards along the uh, same normal so i is zero r is also zero angle of reflection is zero angle of incidence is also zero same thing happens here take a tangent the normal radius itself is becomes equal to normal light rays passing along the no normal again retrace the path come backwards in the same direction and passes through the center of curvature so these three diagrams you must remember three points light rays parallel to the principal axis passes through the focus light rays passing through center of curvature retrace the path and light rays already passing through the focus becomes parallel light ray path is reversible these two paths are reversible passing through the focus becomes parallel parallel means passes through the focus whenever the two or three light rays meet you will get the image at that place for that purpose the, any of these two diagrams we have to take ray diagrams or rays passing through so if the light rays are coming parallel to the principal axis they meet they pass through the focus that is the principal focus the distance from the pole to focus is nothing but uh, equal to focal length the object distance if it is infinity v is equals to f this is infinity means this itself is equals to f image formed is at a focus and a light rays are meeting means a small diminution is image is formed of the distant object light rays coming from the star and sun nearly parallel we take in that cases they are focused at the focus so light rays can be focused for the diminished image diminished really meeting means the what you get the image is nothing but equal to in this case u is infinity one point one more u greater than f u less than f if any of the object is more than the focal length compulsory you will get a uh, real images and u is less than f you will get a uh, virtual images virtual images are as erected images they are also convex mirror virtual erected images real images always inverted images virtual images in re really the room meet if the real meeting means if you keep a one screen one plate white plate or here you can get the light rays meeting there so you will get the image so but virtual images you cannot keep the light rays there behind the mirror we cannot get the image on it so virtual images are erected but we cannot obtain the image on the screen but we can see it with the eyes virtual images can be visible because those way rays diverging rays they have again converged onto the retina you can see that image so on the retina what is the nature of the image formed is inverted and real images just like the concave mirror next is uh, u greater than f if the whenever the object distance is more than f compulsory you will get the real images greater than r okay greater than f only we will take what about the u equal to f u is equals to uh, f we will get the reverse cases u is infinity v is equals to f Re uh, object to the image positions are in re reversible if i keep the 
object at EVF, then image is formed at infinity. Lateral path is reversible, please. Parallel coming, meet at the focus. If the laterals are coming from the focus, they become parallel. That means if you put a light bulb, light bulb at the, fo at the focus, uh, the laterals becomes parallel afterwards. The principle is used in the uh, searchlights, behind the torchlight, etc. If you keep the mirror, mirror like shining surface will be there behind the bulb. And uh, if the laterals coming from the bulb or falling on the mirror at the distance equal to F, then Light rays become parallel. You can get the parallel beam of light rays approximately. There is an error in the spherical mirrors. Instead of that perfect parallel, more parallel if you want, you will have to take the help of parabolic shaped mirrors, not spherical mirrors. We need to take a parabolic shaped mirrors. They will give the more better parallel beam of light rays. Next, u is infinity. V is equals to f you will get. And as the u decreases, in all these cases, if the orbit distance this decreases, object is moving towards the mirror, decreases, then image distance increases. The image position where the letters are meeting now that increases reverse direction you have to take. U increases, U decreases means V increases and vice versa. If U is kept uh, more than 2F, U is kept more than 2F, more than 2F means what uh, this indicates what U is greater than C. C is nothing but equal to radius of curvature R distance it is, it is this point is nothing but equal to 2F point. When U is greater than 2F means not infinity but just beyond that infinity. Too far, infinity really not means uh, at uh, near the stars actually in optics. Uh, Infinity, we mean to say that far away from the two times of focal length, the radius of curvature, we are going to refer that as a infinity. So, beyond the 2f, if object you have taken, where you get the images, images obtained between the f and 2f. Images, this is the image nature is between, between f and 2f. 2f means uh, c. If u is at 2f, this point you need to note. If u is at 2f, then what happens here is u equal to v. Image is obtained at the 2f itself. If you keep the object here, the image is obtained here. If I keep the object at 2f, image is obtained there only. But inverted image will get real image, it is inverted image. But this is a more than 2f points we have discussed. If u is, in, in these cases, you will get the magnification less than 1. Means, uh, and real image. Real images are inverted images. Means minus, mi less than minus 1 you will. Less than 1 and minus. Less than 1 means image size is less than that object size and inverted image, negative means inverted image for the magnifications. If u is between f and 2f, between f comma 2f, if the object is kept between f and 2f, then you will get the image distance, image formed beyond 2f. This is c, f and 2f means beyond the 2f you will get and the image size goes on increasing. As a u decreases, uh, v value increases. So, magnification is v by u we are taking. Minus indicates only in erected, in, in, erected or diminished. So, only check up with this v is increasing means magnification increases. Means image size is bigger than object size. He, height of the image by height of the object. V increases means height also image also increases. So, next is u between f and 2f. Between f and 2f if you are taken means you will get the image beyond 2f more than 2f you will get. That means v is greater than 2f and magnification is more than 1 you will get. That goes on changing. Whenever the u is equal to f you have taken, then v becomes equal to infinity. Parallel bit because light rays becomes parallel. And the special case is when v is, uh, u is less than f, then magnification is less than f, the image becomes uh, Positive image distance becomes equal to positive. In all these cases, uh, image distance is v is minus. Here also v is minus means left side is formed. Image is formed on the left side. But here, whenever the u is less than f, you are keeping the object within the focus. In that case, v is positive and you will get the virtual erected. Virtual images are always erected images. And magnification is more than one. Bigger size you will get. And magnification is more than one. Virtual means and erected also means magnification is a plus. I will just draw two diagrams for this. Others you need to go through the notes. I repeat once again. As the object moves towards the mirror, the image position goes on increasing, the distance increases from the mirror. And as the object is moving towards, the image size, distance also increases, size also increases. Whenever the object is at C, means 2F, image is also at 2F, at this point magnification is 1, minus 1 means inverted and but image size is equals to object size that point you have to note but below this if you are moving up to this image size is continuously increasing and inverted only of course now also inverted but uh, uh, image magnification is less than one till then 
But whenever the object is between F and to F, it is start decreasing towards the main, uh, mirror crossing this C or to F point. Then image size goes on increasing. When object is here, then image size is bigger ones. It keeps on increasing. And magnification is more than one. But whenever the object is at F, image is at infinity. And up till now, we got uh, erratic images. But whenever the object comes between F and 2F, then you will get the image uh, back side of the mirror only. One diagram or two diagrams I will draw correspond to this. If I take the, this is F. This is going to be 2F, means C. I am keeping the object here. That means U is greater than 2F I have taken. 2F means C. That is equal to radius of curvature. Light ray passing parallel to the principal axis, passes through the focus. Light ray passing through the focus should become parallel. And light ray passing through the principal axis, uh, center of curvature, should become retrace the path. 82 right rays we can take. Where they are meeting is here. That is the image formation. This is the object, this is the image formation. Three diagrams not required, 82 we can take. Similarly, if I take uh, for the virtual image, this is a F. This is 2F or C. I am keeping within the focus. U is less than F. U is less than F. F is the distance, the focal length is from optic center to the focus. Then if I take the light rays like this, object is this object, some tree or any object we can put it, having the height H, this is the base, this is the head. Light rays coming parallel to the principal axis, light rays, sorry, parallel to the principal axis should pass through the focus. Okay, and light rays appear to be passing through the center of curvature. Light rays falling here. Light rays which are falling from the object onto the mirror, they appear to be converged, they appear to be meeting here. They don't meet. That is the image formed. So this light ray coming from here, that appears to be coming from the center of curvature in this angle. That is retracing the path. So it comes back like this. This is falling here and comes back like this. They don't meet this side because they are diverging rays. They appear to be meeting here, appear in it. When you are looking from this side, it appears as if they are meeting here. Then that is a virtual image is formed. Then V becomes equal to positive. U is negative and U is less than F conditions. Erected, erected magnified images found behind the mirror. This principle is used in the case of the magnifying of the images to see. That is a shaving mirror or a dentist. Doctors use, dental doctors use, dentist. They use this mirror. So a small mirror will be there, which is a concave mirror kept very close to the uh, teeth. So that the object in the teeth should be within the focus of that mirror. Then you will see the bigger images. And this, this is also used in the astronomical telescopes. Next, if we break up the graphs between U and V, we are taking this U for this, this is only for a concave mirrors, not for the convex mirror graph. Real images we are taking here, not a virtual images also. If you take the U values increase, V values increase, the graph between U and V from this formula is nothing but a F is equal to take the LCM, no, you will get F is equal to after taking LCM, U V by U plus V becomes after taking LCM. This is the equation of uh, Rectangle hyperbola and symmetric graph you take 45 degrees line that intersects the graph at some point and that point distance from the origin is nothing but equal to 2 times the focal length both sides 2f and 2f we can make. intersecting point is 2f and 2f and if you take a 1 by u 1 by v graph we are taking the negative axis side we are not on the positive axis side because u is negative for mirrors, concave mirrors, you are taking U left side only, V is also left side only. So we are taking the negative graphs. Sorry. This V I took the positive, no. We are taking a negative graph. This is U, this is V, both negatives. 45 degrees, intercept point, 2F, 2F. Similarly, if you take 1 by U, 1 by graph, both negative values, then you will get a straight line intercepting on the U, V graphs minus v minus u and the intersecting point will be equal to this is 1 by u this is 1 by v 1 by u equal to 1 by v 1 by v plus 1 by u equal to 1 by f is a equation of a straight line it is used in straight line intersect in the x axis y axis at 1 by u and 1 by v and this the intersecting point is nothing but equal to 1 by f sorry this is 1 by u 
this is a 1 by v graph the intersecting point will be equal to 1 by f and 1 by f are the intersecting points distances from the origin this is 1 by f distance this distance is also equal to 1 by f this is the 1 by u values 1 by v values we are taking 1 by u means v we are taking equal to the other part 1 by v value is 0 you are taking this is 0 you are taking 1 by u if 1 by u are taking 0 means 1 by v equal to 1 by f relation you will get next uh, magnification formula is height of the image by height of the object image distance of object distance minus sign and if you want to get this relation also we can remember it if you don't remember it's not compulsory to know it but you can derive from this relationship 1 by u equal to 1 by v plus 1 by v from this if you multiply through the u multiply through it with u u by f equal to u by u 1 plus u by v from this you can get v by u and get the magnification formula from this or you will get the expression for this f magnification in terms of f and u multiply through it with u you will get this relation multiply through it with v you will get this relationship if you remember this it's fine if you don't remember also directly you can get it uh, the magnification from these two formulas these are the points related to concave mirror and uses also you have to go through for the concave mirror next is lens we discuss after the reflection refraction cases at the uh, slabs or a glass or uh, refracting surfaces or plane surfaces refraction Refraction means light passing from one medium to other medium. Reflection means light coming back to the same medium. So, in the case of the refraction, if you take the one medium, this is say for air, N1 refractive index, and second medium is say water or glass, the refractive index is N2. This is called as a normal, perpendicular to surface is called as a normal. The light ray is, let us take at incident in some angle, that angle between the incident ray and normal is called as angle of incidence. And it is going into the second medium, transparent medium, and angle between the normal and this uh, transmitted ray is called as an angle of refraction. The relation between this I and N that is related to the loss of reflection, loss of refraction. First law is that the incident ray, refracted ray, and normal will be on the same plane. Incident ray is on this board means that refracted ray don't come out of the board. It will be on the board only. They are in the same plane. Second law is called as a Snell's law of refraction. Snell's law gives the relation between N1 and N2 and I and R's. According to this, sin I by sin R is nothing but equal to N2 by N1. Sin I by sin R is sin of angle of incidence, the first medium. First medium relationship we can also take this N1 sin I equal to n2 sin r this is called as a snell slide is important for our problems light ray traveling from rarer medium to denser medium deviates towards the normal so the angle of deviation angle of deviation is the angle between the incident ray and uh, refracted ray this is called as a deviation deviation is nothing but equal to i minus r in case of the light is traveling from this is a denser to rarer in case if you take a denser to rarer, denser to rarer if you have taken, then this is a water, this is a air. Light is traveling from water to air, this is the angle of incidence. This is a light rate traveling from what denser to rarer deviates away from the normal. This is going to be angle of refraction. In the previous case, R is less than I. In now in this case r is more than i so deviation it's supposed to go straight the angle is the angle of deviation is d here r is more than i then deviation becomes equal to r minus i the angle of deviation in all both the cases snell's law is applicable snell's law in terms of the velocity and the refractive index and wavelength is wavelength and velocity relation is v equal to f lambda during refraction refraction now, frequency should remain constant color of the light depends on the frequency only so frequency do not change if you are seeing from the water swimming inside the water you are seeing outside the water 
some uh, flag is there the flag is having the green light green color if you are seeing from the water the color wavelength changes velocity also changes but the frequency remains on the color only so you see the green as green only not other colors colors do not change even though velocity changes wavelength changes but the frequency remains a constant frequency related to the colors so color do not change next complete relationship required for this next law is sin i by sin r equal to n2 by n1 referent is inverse related to the velocities in this first medium velocity is v1 second medium velocity is v2 inverse related so v n2 by n1 means v1 by v2 v equal to f lambda so v1 is equals to f is constant here same light is passing from one medium to other medium f v1 equal to f lambda 1 v2 is equals to f lambda 2 so v1 is equals to f lambda 1 v2 equal to f lambda 2 frequency is same so you can remove this this is a relation you need to calculate uh, required for the applications of the problems velocity is also equal to distance by time so if you are taking the specific distance given here some x distance some slab you have taken some thickness you are comparing then this is nothing but you can take as velocity equal to distance by time so x1 by t we can take time t1 and a velocity v2 equal to distance x2 by t2 time generally will be given same condition now. so we take uh, same time means v1 equal to x1 by t v2 is equal to x2 by t this is called as a distances traveled by the waves and sometimes they will give how many waves are fitting inside this how many waves are fitting in this uh, that we will discuss in the new while doing the problems only this formula you have to remember for the numericals one more thing is Snell's law is not applicable if the lateral falls along the normal along the normal i is 0 light enters along the normal means i is 0 r is also 0 so n by sin r both will be 0 but uh, that means n2 by n1 is 0 which is not possible because n1 and n2 are not uh, zeros what is this refractive index is refractive index is defined as the speed of light in the vacuum by speed of light in the medium the refractive index of any medium the glass if you have taken then what is the speed of light in vacuum to the speed of light in the glass we take in the refractive index of the glass this is called as the absolute refractive index absolute refractive index means you are comparing how much the velocity can change for the when the light pass in that medium when compared to vacuum when compared to vacuum means we call it as a absolute refractive index so for the glass if refractive index means what we take is speed of light in the vacuum the c is equals to 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second by velocity of light in the glass we can take so if to find the velocity of the light in the glass what we can take is equals to c by n glass also we can take and what is c is equals to c equal to f lambda f is constant so we can take it as lambda vacuum this is actually vacuum but approximately equal to air we take v equal to f lambda so lambda glass or lambda medium and only n glass you are taking means below that you are taking for n air what is n air is equals to is 1 n air or n vacuum single refractive index of the metal is given means below that uh, you can take division of 1 1 means that is a uh, n air approximately we can take when the next uh, refractive index term is refractive index of the absolute, absolute refractive index is nothing but equal to once again equal to c by v medium this is for n medium but uh, we have the relative refractive index this is called as the absolute refractive index next we call it as relative refractive index relative means two different medium you are taking you are taking the compulsory vacuum or nearly air but re relative refractive index means you are taking the glass and water like this relative refractive index means you are taking the two different mediums that means if you take the n glass is equals to c by v glass if you take n water it is c by v water taking the one with the other light is traveling from one medium to other medium then we take that n glass to n water we are taking that ratio is relative to the glass with respect to water is n glass by n water cc cancels inversely related to v so it is v water by v glass this is called as a relative refractive index this is nothing but also taken as n1 by n2 n1 by n2 is equals to v2 by v1 this also mentioned as n21 Okay, the term we will discuss again later. We will stop now.